Hi guys, Mr. Rowlands here. Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we are going to be looking at theory. Okay, so we're going to start off with data types. So the first thing I wanted to introduce was what is data? Data is an organised facts that have not been processed. So the best way for me to explain this is uh, if you have done a controlled assessment that uses a CSV file or a text file, okay, this is or could be unorganized data. Okay, so here's two examples that are not related to any live control conditions at the moment that I have created. Okay, and there's a text file. Okay, that's separated by a new line, and there's a CSV file that is separated via commas. Okay, now obviously at the moment that information to us is just a list of information. We don't actually know what it's for. It's not used in any way. So when does data become information? Well, data becomes information when it is usable. So it's became uh, organised, it's or structured, or it's presented in a way that we can use it or understand it. So here, look, I presented it in the table. Uh, perhaps it's for a food store and uh, eggs uh, for sale at three pound twenty, bacon's one pound twenty, so on and so forth. Okay. So that leads me on to uh, data types. There are lots of different data types. Okay, and a lot of people get some of them confused. So I'm going to try and cover uh, some of those mistakes. Now, the first one I want to cover is character. A character is a single unit of information. What is meant by single unit is basically a single character. Okay, so therefore an example here would be a number eight on its own. It is a single numerical byte. Okay, a number one, okay, would be another example. Now an alphabetical character, such as the letter G on its own, that is a single character as well. And let's not forget symbols. You can also have a, a symbol on its own, such as uh, here, the percentage sign or perhaps the, uh, the at sign on its own as well. That would be exactly the same. Now I'm going to move on to string. String feeds from character. It is multiple characters together. So the word hello is obviously uh, five characters there. Okay. But a lot of people make a mistake with string, okay, and they only think it can contain uh, alphabetical characters. So I'm going to cover that one in a little bit more detail in just a moment. So I'll just pop this one in your memory bank and we'll come back to it in a moment. Now inches is really easy. An integer is just a whole number, such as a number 5, the number 54, the number 205. Okay, they are whole numbers. They don't use a decimal place. Okay, Whereas a real number, or also known as a float number, is basically a number with a decimal place. So the example I've got here is 3.4. Another example would be uh, pi in Pythagoras' theory. 3.142 blah de blah. Okay, that's got a decimal place, therefore it is a real number. Okay. Uh, the next one on my list is Boolean. Now you've already seen me mention this a couple of times uh, in some of my examples. The binary is basically a binary value that can be uh, one possible outcome or another. There is only two outcomes, true or false, one or zero. They both mean the same thing, so one is true, zero is false. Okay? You've heard me before refer to this as a light switch. It is the easiest way to remember it. It's either on or off. Uh, and then finally, this is the one that a lot of people forget, null. Okay, it is a data type. Whenever you create a variable uh, at the start of a, a maybe some PHP script or another language, uh, and you say a variable equals and then null, you're basically setting the data type to nothing. It hasn't got them. Okay, but it's still passed as a data type. At some point, you will replace that. Okay, and maybe with a string value, a character value, or maybe an integer. But it still comes under data types. Okay then. So. I've mentioned that I was going to recover string because a lot of people uh, struggle with this one and this is the biggest common uh, misconception that I see in the cl uh, classroom. So a string can hold uh, alphanumerical uh, characters including uh, text, number, symbol and also don't forget it can hold a carriage return which is basically a new line uh, or a space. Okay? It can also hold uh, full stops uh, and commas but those would obviously come under symbols. Okay. So. It doesn't hold them individually, it can hold them together okay, in a combination, as I've mentioned just here. Okay. So the ex best example I can give you is here, look, I've got the car manufacturer Persia. Okay. So obviously that's just holding uh, alphabetical characters. But this one, Persia 106, has got alphabetical characters and numerical characters. Okay. So that's still classed as a string. And then this one here is also still classed as a string, which has basically got uh, a symbol, uh, some alphabetical characters and some numer numerical characters all together, including a space. Okay? Nice and easy there, okay? 
three nice, easy to remember examples. Okay, so let's talk about Boolean operators and expressions. So I mentioned earlier that a Boolean can either be true or false, okay? But this can be affected by operators, okay? And this will become a little bit clearer in a moment because I've got some really nice examples to show you, okay? A Boolean operator is something such as and or or not. And both conditions have to be true, okay? So in order for something uh, for the Boolean to be true, both conditions have to be met. Whereas with or, either, okay, condition or both can be true okay so only one out of the two conditions has to be true to for this value to be uh, a true overall okay uh, and not in other words this change is true to false and false to true but this will become a little bit clearer uh, in the following examples okay and these can be used in conjunction with things uh, such as the greater than sign the greater than and equal to sign the less than sign the less than and equal to sign the equal to sign, which is double equals, okay, and the not equal to sign, okay. So I'm going to move forward now and show you a couple of examples. Okay, so here's my first example. What I've got here is a class of students also stood behind a desk, okay, and this is an if statement I have created using Boolean operators. So I've got if gender equals equals female stand up. So what I want you to do at this point is read that piece of code and interpret it. In, all, in other words, if you are the gender female, you're going to make this statement true. Therefore, you're going to stand up. How many people are going to stand up? So what I'd like you to do now, just have a little point at the screen to yourself uh, for a little bit of uh, personal uh, success. See whether or not you can identify who's going to stand up at this point. Okay, And I'm going to run that for you now. There we go. So as you can see, there is four people that have stood up. Okay, four females. Okay. So obviously, if gender is female, true, 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 and true. Whereas the, the three chaps here, if gender is female, well, no, he's female, so that's false. If gender is female, that's false. If gender is female, that's false. So he didn't stand up, did he? Okay. So let's move on to my next example. Okay then, earlier I mentioned the fact that they've been able to reverse the operator by using the not operator. Now this time we've actually got two possible ways to write this. We've got if hair is not blonde, stand up. If hair not blonde, stand up. So basically we've used this one and this one, but they are achieving the same goal. Okay, So let's start here. If they are not blonde, basically, are you blonde? No. So stand up because that is true, he's not blonde. Are you blonde? Yes. So that's false. Because she's blonde, it's false. It's reverse the operator. Are you blonde? No. So that's true. Are you blonde? Yes, that's false. Are you blonde? Yes, that's false. Are you blonde? No, so that's true. Are you blonde? No, so that's true. Let's give that a try and see what happens. And there we go. Okay. I hope you understand that one. Let's move on and try another one. Okay, then let's try another one then. If hair is equal to blonde and gender is equal to male. So remember earlier I said on a and statement that both conditions have to be true, okay? So in other words, you have to be blonde, okay, and you have to be male uh, in order to stand up at this point, okay? So let's start off at this corner here. Are you blonde? No. So he's failed straight away, okay? Are you blonde? Yes. Are you male? No. Are you blonde? No. So she's failed straight away. Are you blonde? Yes. Are you male? No, so she's failed. Are you blonde? Yes. Uh, are you male? Yes. So he's passed. So we, we know he's going to stand up. Are you blonde? No. Are you male? Yes. So he's failed. Are you uh, blonde? No. Are you male? No. She's failed. So let's put that one to test as well. And as we can see, just a young man with blonde hair who is male has met both true conditions, so he's standing up here. Okay? Okay then. So as you can see, I've now just swapped the operator to or. If hair equals equals blonde or gender equals male. Okay, this one I see a lot of people fall over at this point. At this point, you only, only have to meet one of the two conditions. So you can either be blonde or male, but then you can meet both as well. Okay, so as long as you meet one or more conditions, then you're allowed to stand up. Okay. Are you blonde? 
No. But are you male? Yes. So this chap here is going to stand up. Are you blonde? Yes. So she's going to stand up. Okay. Are you blonde? No. Are you male? No. So she's not going to stand up. Are you blonde? Yes. So straight away we know she's going to stand up. Are you blonde and male? Okay. Sorry, blonde or male. Okay. Well, he's both. So he's definitely going to stand up. Are you blonde or male? Okay. Well, he's not blonde, but he's male, so he's going to stand up. Are you blonde or male? No. So that one's false. Okay. So let's run that look. And as you can see, anyone that is blonde or male, okay, has stood up. Okay. And moving on to the next example. Okay. If age is greater than 12, stand up. And as you can see, it's already gone ahead and showed us this one. Okay. I didn't think there was much uh, point in spending a lot of time on this one because it's very easy. So obviously, if your age is greater than 12, you're going to stand up. And obviously, there's only one person with the age greater than 12, so he stood up. Okay. Hence uh, the reason he's standing. But why hasn't this young lady here stood? Well, it says greater than 12. So that means they can't be 12, they've got to be older than 12. Okay? Remember that. Let's take a look at this one then. Okay, we've got if age is equal to or greater than 12. So this time, look, if you are equal to 12, which this young lady is, or you're older than 12, stand up. Hence why well, these two individuals here have stood up. Okay? And then on to the next one. This one here. If age is less than 7, stand up. So let's have a look. Less than seven. How many people do we see that are less than seven? Okay, have a guess, see if you can work it out. And I can only see one. Okay, so let's give that a try and see if I'm right. Okay, now as you can see, just a young lady here has stood up. Okay, I'm hoping you're getting this. I think it's quite easy. Okay, then let's switch that around a little bit. If age is less than, okay, or equal to seven, how many people are going to stand up now? Okay, remember this is less than or equal to. Okay, so could be both. Okay, have a guess. See if you can identify who's going to stand up. Okay. There we go. Look, And this time, two people have stood up because he is equal to seven and she is less than seven. Okay. Okay, then what about this one then? If age is less than or equal to seven or greater than 13. This is a bit of a trick question. So I advise do it in steps. If you are less than, okay, seven, stand up. So this person here is going to stand up. Or equal to seven, so, uh, stand up. So these two here, look, are going to stand up. And then here we've got or greater than 13. Well, this chap here is older than 13, so he's stood up. Okay. So I'm glad you've understood that so far. Now what about this one? Look closely, okay. And I'm hoping you spot this one. Spot this one, okay without any help from myself. If age is less than seven, okay, and greater than 13. Read that again. If age is less than or equal to seven and greater than 13. Okay. Anybody guessed it yet? Yeah. You can't be less than seven and greater than 13. It's not possible. Okay. So that one wouldn't return any results. Okay. Because we are asking for someone that is less than seven and greater than 13. It is impossible to be less than seven and greater than 13. So there, there is a logical error within that code, isn't there? Okay, because logically, it's impossible to be uh, equal to seven or seven, okay, and greater than 13. That's not physically possible. Right then, thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed that video. I hope it has helped you understand uh, data types uh, and the use of Boolean operators. Okay, please tune into another one of my videos. Okay, please rate, subscribe, and leave me a comment. That would be great. Thank you very much.